Hey everybody, in this video we are going to talk about how a piece of bad gear turned into my favorite synthesizer, the reasons why I'm using this ugly design failure all the time, why the Roland TB3 is massively underrated and how both total beginners and seasoned pros can benefit from what only seems to be a UI nightmare and dumped down preset abomination trying to capitalize on the heritage of the famous Roland TB303. This is a redemption story. The Roland TB3 was released around 10 years ago and is part of the infamous original IRA range known for somewhat believable ACB emulations, plasticky appearance and a goth friendly color scheme. This digital take on the iconic acid machine made it into a very early Bad Gear episode. I was reviewing Sims for only a few months back then, so I think it is time to do this surprisingly capable synth justice and go a little deeper. On a surface level all you can do is select one of the presets which are grouped into classic 303 sounds, basses, and special effects. There are rudimentary filter controls, and a knob each for dialing in accent intensity and one obscure FX parameter. You have to enter envelope mod mode in order to tweak further parameters using the rather disco looking touchpad. Although envelope controls tend to be in the focus here, other parameters can be addressed too, but more of that later. You can access a third parameter by applying pressure to the touchpad, but it's on off only and doesn't work properly on this unit. Although you can play the synth via MIDI. The internal 32 step sequencer is the weapon of choice for the bass lines we know and love. Define pattern length, select the step you want to edit, choose an octave, enter a note or rest and add slides and accents. All this can be done while the sequencer is running, there's a real time record mode too and programming patterns is a breeze if you are used to either the original 303 or an authentic clone like Uli's TD3. Patterns can be transposed on the fly, 8 banks with 8 patterns each should do the trick even for longer life sets and there's a gimmicky XY play mode and even more gimmicky scatter effects. That was about as far as we got in the original Bad Gear episode and the completely foolproof workflow is what made me fall in love with the instrument in the first place. I need to produce a lot of music fast and whenever I put the TB3 in a jam I can be certain that it works, that it sounds good in a mix and I won't be losing time with elaborate sound design. However, if you flip through the presets you will notice that there are things going on under the hood that go far beyond what you would expect from a 303 type synth. never released a software editor for the TB3, so the true power of the synth cannot be unleashed without third party tools. Fortunately a group of enthusiasts never gave up on the TB3 and free editors have reached a level of maturity that allows for professional access to the deep and versatile VA engine. I'm using Dope Robots panel for controller which works as a standalone app or plugin in your DAW, while traditional 303 users have to choose between strangely deformed saws and squares. TB3 also offers a sign 
that seems to be unaffected by the bass munching nature of the filter and there are two colors of noise. These basic building blocks of sound can be used simultaneously. There are two full-fledged ADSR envelopes for amplitude and the filter and the syncable LFO let you mix waveforms including a sample and hold generator for Eurorack grade modulation patterns. <laughs> the aforementioned oscillator section has a few more tricks up its sleeve. Not only can the waveforms be pitched independently allowing for detunes and simple chords Roland also included a ring modulator and sophisticated cross-modulation section. Effects are the manufacturer's strong suit and they definitely went the extra mile here. The dedicated distortion stage comes with all the classics including a freaking metal zone and you can add up to two independent FX units with algorithms ranging from bread and butter delays to relentless bit crush. Accent, cutoff and resonance controls will always stick to their guns, but the effect knob and touchpad can be freely assigned, which is great for customizing patches for live performances. Having a graphical representation of the step sequencer and librarian features for sound is awesome. Keep in mind that this overpowered set of sound design tools is still limited by some of the instrument's idiosyncrasies. You have to sync the editor to the machine manually, there are only 15 users user patch slots which don't react to program changes, cutoff and resonance can't be saved and recalled and I didn't find a way to get rid of the 303-ish legato behavior. 5-pin MIDI is much appreciated though. Roland has discontinued the TB3 a while back, but you can still find it on the used market for almost ridiculously low prices. I have two of them here, which are, as you might have noticed, in constant and heavy use. And while they look cheap, build quality is surprisingly good. I expect them to do their job for years to come. It is well known that Roland doesn't chase ghosts, and the relationship between me and the iconic brand is, let's call it, complicated. However, I would be more than willing to shill the living hell out of an Audio Pilz branded TB3 reissue. We should totally talk about the color scheme though. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of non-bad gear stuff I should do on this channel. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel and welcome to the monthly Vokoda shoutouts. After this celebration of the TB3 there can only be one Vokoda for this shoutout. Roland's very own VT3 voice transformer, tier 4. <laughs> I'm not sure if this little box is going to be a future classic. Tier 6 <laughs> Again, thank you so much for supporting the channel. See you next month.